Hi, welcome to Get Your Drawings to Be More Consistent, Practice Secrets. Uh, today we're obviously going to be talking about getting your drawings to be more consistent. It's a question that I often get asked. Yeah, today I'm going to address it directly. Hi, my name is Luis Escobar. I'm a storyboard artist on The Simpsons television show. I've been working on the show for over 20 years. Consistency is is a very tricky thing, uh, especially when you're beginning. But oh, but in general, just just as an artist, having consistent quality of work is very tricky. Now most people, when you talk to them, uh, there's two there's two types of consistency that they want to get. They want to get consistent characters. They want their drawing their characters to look the same every single time they draw it. And the other type is getting their quality consistent. And now that is a very different topic. I have addressed getting your characters consistent. I have made a video, I could link to it below, but today the consistency and quality is in question. So I'm going to actually talk and compare this question to sports like soccer, like martial arts, Kung Fu, because that's my thing. I tend to compare things to martial arts. And I'm going to compare it also to playing an instrument. Now, somehow, when it comes to drawing, we tend to ignore something important, which is practice. And practice is very difficult to think about in drawing because you don't often see depictions of an artist practicing. You often see a, depictions of artists performing, producing good work, but you never actually see practice. In movies, for example, when, when I get in my mind the imagery of a practicing musician, there's a picture of a celloist, and all they do is practice the cello over and over and over and try to get the song right, get the music right, get the piece that they're working on right, and they would just do it over and over and over again. So we have that picture of, in our heads of a musician practicing, at least I do. And when we think of sports, for example, English football, we think of somebody like Messi, who's, you know, top performer, one of the best in the world, if not the best in the world. And what do they do? They, what does he do? He practices with his team. They go and they're constantly practicing. Just because they're the best doesn't mean they don't go around and practice. And they're not practicing like playing the game. They're actually practicing like passing the ball and, and doing specific drills over and over. In martial arts, you have the martial artist who's doing performing the forms. So you watch them do the forms over and over. And that's our visual of a practicing martial artist is that they just repeat doing the forms over and over and over. So that when they do have to perform their art, if they do have to defend themselves, it just becomes second nature. It's all muscle memory. But when it comes to drawing, you only see the artist producing. So what gives? Okay, so here's something that I've just recently uh, started becoming aware of, and it's something that I think had I known it earlier, I may, one, have ignored the advice <laughs> because it's not romantic, and two, I probably would have learned and done and gotten my skills up faster, better, and quicker. I would be a far better artist than I am today if I had actually done it. So what exactly am I talking about? If you're having trouble with consistency, part of the problem is your lack of formal drawing practice. The best way to practice is not just drawing, but giving yourself the right drills. Remember what I said about the forms of the martial artist? or uh, the practice of the celloist, or the drills of the soccer player. That's what I'm talking about. Doing one thing over and over again. Not doing a complex amount of things over and over, but one. For example, if you want to get good at drawing straight lines, guess, how, guess what you have to do? Draw straight lines, right? Drills are useful because they force you to focus on getting one thing right. And this is really important. You have to get it right. You could do something over and over and over. If you're doing it incorrectly, what you're basically doing is changing your brain chemistry to encode that thing poorly. And so what you're doing is creating a bad habit. So make sure that when you do a drill, it is done correctly, slowly and the way it ought to be done. If this requires somebody to look over your shoulder and tell you, 
no, this is not working, do it like this, then try to find that person. Drills are about attacking one thing you need to work on and encoding the correct way of doing it into your brain. That way, when you need to do it under regular circumstances, you don't have to think about it. It becomes automatic. That's how the performance part occurs when you're actually watching somebody draw. It is automatic because they've done repetitions of the thing. Not all artists do this, but some of the best artists have done some form of drill, even if it doesn't seem like it is a drill. Drawing can become extremely complicated, so if you can focus on one thing at a time, you can get better, faster, and your drawings will get more consistent. Okay, let me show you an example of what I mean when I'm talking about drills. So for example, if you want to get better control over your line drawing, here's a few things you can do. Here's a few things. Here's a, here's a few examples. Go to the DrawFu drills. What does that mean? What, what am I talking about? Um, I have a website called the drawing website and in it I teach very basic stuff and uh, I begin with drawing lines. So I begin with just explaining what lines are, etc, etc. And then I give exercises. And the exercises are basically this. You draw a box and then you just start drawing lines and start drawing this, breaking up the space in here to create kind of like this abstract uh, little drawing. This is so that you could get used to drawing straight lines. You could also draw C curves and you could draw S curves this way. Or you could combine them all and draw C curves, S curves and straights all in one box. And you could darken them in if you want. And you could even add color. And basically what you're doing is drawing these really interesting patterns. You could do that. You could put two dots and connect them. You could fill a box with lines at different spaces. So another thing that you can do is you could draw a box. I have here a bunch of boxes. And then you can l just draw the lines and space them as evenly as possible all the way across, all the way down all the way sideways like this, this way, that way. Space them further away, so that's the different spaces. Break them up, do this. These actually, um, this is an example of something that I was doing as a drill for myself. And the reason what I was, and what I was doing here is practicing uh, line control and practicing pressure control, practicing spa uh, spacing my lines, practicing pen. Uh, see, here's, uh, here's just one of just curves. So this is something that I did to drill myself so I could have some hand-eye coordination so that I can create consistency with my lines. And this is a recent exercise I started drilling myself with so that I could improve and get even better. I could draw straight lines, but doing these exercises, oh my gosh, it really opened me up to how much further I need to go and how much more practice I need. And just doing this was phenomenal. But check yourself, check yourself. For example, here, notice that I have um, this area here. Uh, the line consistency is off. So I fixed it in here because I didn't want to encode this mistake. Okay. Uh, these lines aren't consistent enough. So I eventually went back and I did it again, trying to get them consistent. And these weren't quite consistent. These are a little thicker. So I did it again. And this one did come out okay. These lines came out okay. These these lines did not. They were like inconsistent. Some of them are slightly thicker than the others. So I tried it again here. So again, just practicing going over and over. If there was a mistake, if you see that there's something a little bit off, you didn't quite get it, do it again. And then do it again. And then do it again. The reason why is because if you do it wrong once, that is what your brain thinks it ought to be doing. So if you do it right the second time, it's it's got one time that you've done it wrong and one time that you've done it right and it doesn't know which one it ought to be doing. So if you do it right again, 
it starts becoming encoded as this is the way it ought to be. And then if you do it again, your brain starts picking up of, oh, this is the way it's got to be. And then again, encoding, 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 so that when you have to d perform and you have to actually do a straight line, your body knows what it is. And like I said, another way of doing it is put a dot and then put another dot and then just try to connect it like a connect the dots. Okay, so if you want to get good at drawing shapes like squares and circles, same thing. Do the draw food drills. Fill the page with the shapes. So again, let's go back to the draw food and let's take a look. So I have this, which is all about drawing shapes. And then I give exercises and I will link to these pages in the description of this video. So if you want to draw squares, I suggest if you want to have something fun at the end, by the time you're done, I suggest you make patterns. Make patterns out of the squares. So make a square and then draw another square and then just draw a square inside and, the, and then darken it in. And now you've got some interesting shape or you could make a very interesting um, shape this way and make patterns this way of just drawing squares or draw circles and just, you know, create a pattern with these circles and like this too you could draw pattern with these circles uh, same with the triangles you could do patterns with the triangles it's very very simple but you are practicing the shapes and the more you do it and 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 you know at first being rough is fine but little by little you want to get a little bit more control over your shapes again and same same thing with here after you're done with that you could also create symbols Instead of just patterns, you can make symbols and combining all these shapes together. All right. Drill yourself on whatever you want to be good at. Just remember, you must be doing it correctly. Do it slow. Get it right. It's not enough to do it. Otherwise, you it's not enough to just do it. OK, it's not enough just to go through the motions. You have to get them to be the way they ought to be, the way that um, um, make it look right. Uh, get, uh, find the facility, find find the way to, to get it to look right. Because if you don't, uh, um, you will encode the bad habit, the draw, bad drawing habit into your brain and it's gonna make it that much more difficult. Now, another type of example I'm gonna give right now is um, some videos that I found online that are pretty amazing. Okay, so if um, if these exercises that I'm giving you is not enough, you could you could drill yourself even even deeper. So I recommend going to this video here called Dynamic Sketches Sketching One with Peter Hahn. And the reason I recommend this, uh, let me turn to the volume, is that he goes over doing these exercises here. So he actually gives you drills, drawing lines, drawing arcs, uh, drawing waves, drawing circles. So he gives you really good drills in order to do that. And then he shows you himself. He's practicing doing the drills himself. So he shows you how to do it. And um, yeah, they may seem tedious. But um, believe me, this, I can't recommend this, doing this enough. Like, it is so, so important. Uh, this is how you create consistency, is by doing these drills. See, he's even got another video here, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to link to these in the description where you get to see him do the drills too. They're so good. So I highly recommend you take a look at these and follow these drills. If you're having trouble, just beginning, being consistent. Um, if you're more advanced at drawing, do these anyway, because you're drawing, this is what you're drawing. This is what you're drawing. You're drawing these lines. You're drawing these circles. 
um, you're doing these uh, shading patterns. Uh, let me show you my uh, some of my other drills that I've been doing recently. I decided that I was going to get better at inking with uh, pens. So I began here and it's it wasn't coming out. It, I didn't do well here. Um, the, the exercise here was to do light gray, mid-tone, dark gray, and then the transitional grays in between. And if you look at this vi this one here, these two are really close together. They look the same. So this is actually a fail for me. This is the first time I did it. This is a fail. So I I did so I had to this I had just officially encoded this bad way of doing it. So I had to fix fix that. I had to figure out how to do it better. So I did this one instead. And this one again didn't quite turn out. This was okay, but then these two felt too close together. They felt exactly the same. And then the, these were okay. So I still am encoding bad habit here. So then I did it again. And this time I got it right. You could visibly see that these are all different. If, if you squint, you could tell that there's a difference. If you squint here, it's very difficult to tell that these two are different and if you squint here all of these three look the same but in this one there's separation so now i had two failures and one success in my brain so i had only encoded one success out of two failures so in order to make sure to over to to encode my success i did it two more times and then i had uh, and, and i was happy with this but one of the things that I noticed was that this bottom line, though dark, was more black than dark gray. In fact, I wanted this dark gray to be down here, which meant that I had to find an in-between between these two. So I decided to go and try it again with a brand new column. And I did it again, and this time I failed again. These two tones if you squint are too similar they look basically the same so i failed i had encoded myself into a bad habit here so i had to try again and this time i succeeded these if you squint separate so once i had succeeded i had to repeat my success over and over and over in order to encode my success um, and, and believe me, this was not a, it seems like a really boring exercise, but when you know what you're doing, when you're, when you're actively encoding uh, and thinking about encoding a, the success and the consistency into your brain, um, the exercise does no longer feels like a boring exercise because you know exactly what you're doing. And it's very odd, but I was really into doing this. I was, my brain was just like, I really felt like deep into in concentration doing these these exercises. And again, I did I did it again. This time um, I was basically doing this, but without the separation. I wanted to um, just make the gradient go in uh, and uh, be a, a gradual uh, gradation. That was the goal. And this was really difficult for me. Um, I failed four times and only succeeded once here. So, which means that I have to go back and continue to do this more times. I have to do this at least six or seven times. I have to do E, as good as I did in E, at least five to six times so that I could not encode because right now my brain is, 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 has not encoded any of this information. This is a failure because you could actually see um, where the divisions of the um, transition occurred. You could actually see here's where it's, 
it, the transition occurs. Here's where the transition occurs. Here's, you know, I want it to be like, you couldn't, you really can't tell. It just gradually happens. This one again, you can see the transitions. You could see where this is separated from this is separated from here. This I started getting it, but um, my pen control was at, I was way out of control. Like there's like a big gap here. Um, it, 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 I, I just went out of control. And then here, um, there's not enough of a transition. This kind of just clumps together. If you squint, uh, there isn't much. If you squint in both of these, there isn't much of a... Uh, uh, this tone is, it doesn't exist in here. It's, it, it's all kind of dark gray. So here, I succeeded. There, This tone exists in here, and it gradually goes in here. And it. I think this works. If there's any, if I would complain or I, I would give myself a critique, is that this space here is too much. But otherwise, it's much more successful than these. So I have to repeat this success more than this failure in order to encode this success. And the, and the more I encode it, the better and more consistent my work will become. OK, so that's why it's so important to drill. That is that is the importance of drilling. Whatever it is that you're having trouble with, with your consistency, if you're having trouble with heads that don't look right, if you're having trouble with eyes that you can't place in the right spot, if you can't, if you're having trouble with proportion, just practice that over and over. Drill yourself on the proportion. Do the same proportion over and over and over next to each other next to each other next to each other until you start getting the proportion right every single time check yourself is it what you want does it look right if the, if you have a, if you don't know what the proportion is find a book like a Andrew Loomis book or, or and, and 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 find the the proportions that that you think are the ideal proportions and then the first thing you do is you copy it and then the second time you do it you draw it from your head and then um, and then you check it. You check the proportions uh, with the with the the way that you had uh, with your first copy or with uh, with, with your guide uh, and, and measure it. Me measure the heads or whatever it is. And if you got it good, if you didn't do it again and get it right. And if you did get it right, do it again so that you can encode it and, and supersede the previous bad habit versions of what you did so you, you you go over it and you do it again and you do it again and you want to have a consistency of having gotten it right so that when you have you're called upon to do it your muscle memory takes over and then you get it right that's how you get consistency that's what you need to do so that's why drills are so so important so again let me just really quickly if you're having trouble with consistency, part of the problem is your lack of formal drawing practice. The best way to practice is not just drawing, but giving yourself the right drills. Drills are useful because they force you to focus on getting one thing right. Drawing can become extremely complicated, so if you can focus on one thing at a time, you can get better faster, and your drawings will get more consistent. Drills are about attacking one thing you need to work on and encoding the correct way of doing it into your brain. That way, when you need to do it under regular circumstances, you don't have to think about it. It becomes automatic. That's how you create consistency. That's the secret of practicing. You've got to do that. Be conscious, be aware when you practice. Know what you're doing, what you're what you're actually what you're basically hardwiring your brain into encoding the correct way of doing something so that when it comes to having to do it, you know how to do it. All right. And uh, that's my advice to you. If you got value from this video, I would uh, appreciate if you return value for value by becoming a patron uh, for a dollar a month. That's about it. Um, you actually get these videos uh, months in advance. You also get the benefit of uh, having me answer your questions first. Um, uh, often I get questions. If you ask me a question, I will answer your question first. Like if other people ask me questions on YouTube or via email or whatever other thing, 
I will answer their questions as well. However, my patrons get first dibs. I stop everything and I answer their questions and make a video of their uh, answering their questions first. And that is a benefit for being a patron at even the $1 level. On top of that, you also get all kinds of different uh, tutorials uh, that I put on the web and a lot of different, uh, since I do so much on the web all over the place, not just on YouTube, um, I also post everything I do there for my patrons so that they can see and it's all in one place. All right, so thank you so much and I'll see you next time. All right, and bye.